Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am here each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. At the Clark Law Firm, my focus is, and always will be, landowner, oil and gas right, owner representation. I have not, I do not, and I will never, never represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, gas right owner, because I'm telling you, we need it on our side. We need it on our side. I represent landowners for such things as gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews, consultations, gas lease amendments, modifications, and ratifications, such important documents. I represent landowners for pipeline agreements, pipeline negotiations, pipeline reviews and consultations, unitization issues, royalty issues, estate planning issues related to natural gas and the gas development, lawsuits involving breach of contract, royalty breach of contract. Are your royalties being calculated properly? Or is the company inappropriately taking deductions? Another very hot area. As we go to central and western Pennsylvania more, my opinion, I think a lot of companies are breaching or operating in contradiction to the gas lease that exists, but they're not being challenged. They're not being challenged. And if you think your gas lease has been breached, and most importantly, but no, I shouldn't even say that. If you think your gas lease has been breached, or, or if you are approached for a gas lease amendment, modification, and or ratification of your existing gas lease, Please put your pen down. Please put your pen down. Please get assistance. I would love to hear from you. It's what I do. But please, if you don't call me, call somebody who's going to work for you, who knows what they are doing. If you are given a gas lease ratification, and often it's accompanied with gas lease, ratification, amendment, modification. You really should have that reviewed before you sign. In my opinion, and this is very, 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 very strong opinion, I have seen more than once where gas leases, in my opinion, have terminated, but the company presents the landowner with a modification, amendment, or ratification, and that is fixes and corrects the termination, which had you not signed it, your lease may have terminated, in which case you could negotiate for a new lease at significant compensation in many cases. And it almost certainly higher royalty percentages or percentage than you currently have. You got to look at it individually. If you hear one thing today, and I hope you hear a lot, and I hope you, you keep it all, and you remember it all, but one thing I really hope sticks with you. If you are given a gas lease amendment, modification, and or ratification, that you remember, hey, wait a second, that guy on the radio said I should get this checked out before signing. You can call me or call somebody else, but get it reviewed we do these reviews and consultations, but get it reviewed and understand why am I being asked to sign this document? And it may be, not saying it is in every case, but it may be because your lease is terminated, because the company cannot really operate under your lease, because you have leverage and you can negotiate to do better, but they're not telling you that. They're just giving you a modification, amendment, and ratification, and then often telling you, oh, well, hey, you know, this is great. We want to get rolling. We want to make you rich here. We just need you to sign this. Please, let's stop signing these documents and get help. You can call me, Attorney Doug Clark, Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. It's what we do. It's what I do all the time. 
You can find out about reviews and consultations. Send me the information. We can do it in person or by telephone. But do something. Don't just sign. And I can't talk about numbers in these cases often because we resolve some of them. And when we do, we're often bound by confidentiality and we can't get into the details of the particular case. But I can state that. I have seen on multiple occasions where gas lease amendments, modifications, and reviews are presented because there's either a fatal problem in the existing lease, and I put that word in quotations because it may not be existing, it may have expired, and we see that a lot in Western PA, and what we really see it too, in, in North Central too, in Tioga as well, but what we also see is is that these leases are often older leases. Think about this. And by the way, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can join me each and every week at this time on this station. And you can call the office 570-307-0702. So I want to get back to these this discussion on amendments, modifications, and ratifications of gas leases. Think about this. Many of the older leases and older leases are still in the 2000s, meaning in 2004, 2003, earlier. But many of these older leases were drafted and created at a time when companies were not horizontally drilling. And so often in these older oil and gas leases, there's not language in there for such items. One great example is pooling and unitization. That there's not language in there that allows for it or allows for this pooling of multiple parcels in such a size, meaning that you can put together 640 acres, 1,000 acres, 1,500 acres. Often these older leases prohibit or disallow pooling Sometimes they say that pooling can only occur where you combine this property with a neighboring property. Sometimes it'll say that there's a limitation of 180 acres as a maximum unit size. Sometimes it's 360. Sometimes it's 640 and the company wants to change that. But the key is when you're asked to change your lease, your lease that is existing now, may have expired, but is, we'll say it's existing now and you're asked to change it. You better darn well be getting assistance to figure out why is this the case. And if you're relying on that company land man or that company employee and the land man who works for the company, if you are relying on them to tell you why they're presenting you with this document and what that means to you, I am telling you, we listen, we listen, we hear everything we can, we take notes, we listen and we remember, and then we go and we get help and assistance and we talk to somebody who's truly working for us and going to tell me as the landowner what I really need to know. Why is this document being presented? The company says, well, they're presenting it to me because they're great guys they want to make me rich. Well, maybe they're presenting it to you because in reality, your initial lease or your existing lease, maybe it's not existing. Maybe it's actually already terminated. Maybe your existing lease doesn't allow for pooling and unitization. Maybe your existing lease, and listen to this one, doesn't allow for the wells on your property or pooled with your property to be shut in and not producing. And I'm seeing that more and more and more. And that can be a fatal problem for the company. They cannot operate under that type of lease in many cases. So in these scenarios, and I don't think these scenarios are that uncommon, in these scenarios, the company cannot in reality develop under your lease. So they need you to change your lease. And what you need to do is, is to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, who can assess your leverage. I talk about that a lot, assessing leverage. Mistakes in 
underestimating or assessing your leverage and believing that you don't have any is going to result in significantly less and less compensation. It's going to result in documents that are far more favorable to the company than they are to you because you have done a leverage assessment, but you've miscalculated your leverage thinking that you didn't have any. And also you relied on the company landman who works for the company telling you, oh yeah, you know, we can do this. You don't have any leverage. Here's what it is. Oh, by the way, we're just here to make you rich. The more they talk about money, the more they talk about future riches and money, the more you should be thinking in your back of the, in the back of your head, hey, I better have somebody look at this to make sure there's not something I should know, but the other side, the company, is not telling me that. I assure you, these are not rocket science tricks that the company and their representatives have come up with. It is distract with the shiny object, distract with the money, the promise of future riches, and have the individual sign the paper with your pen. And unfortunately, sometimes it's just not real hard for them because people get distracted. People get distracted. Also, people in Pennsylvania, people like my parents, like my grandparents, even my dad today when I talked to him about old leasing years ago, he talks about how good the company land guy was, how nice he was. Um, boy, you don't want to see their lease that they signed way back in the day, my grandfather. But yeah, talk about how nice he was. Well, they don't send people out to start roughing you around. You know, I had somebody the other day tell me, yeah, these gas companies, they're like the mafia. Well, I, I won't offer an opinion there. Uh, but they, one thing is, is they don't go around and rough you up, at least not physically, at least not physically. So what we have to do is recognize this, understand this, and protect ourselves. You know, protect yourself, your property, protect your income from the property, and do it for future generations. Do it for yourself. Do it for your family. Do it for your children and grandchildren. We have to start protecting ourselves and realizing, realizing that companies, the Pennsylvania is full of it. People who signed bad leases at super low rates at $100 and their neighbor signed at $5,000 an acre. That's all over the place. Let me ask you, do you think that the companies have changed? Do you think now they say, well, yeah, hey, you know, we got a bunch of real cheap leases or yeah, we're taking deductions and a lot of people maybe thought we weren't going to and we're making a ton of money because we have saved a lot of money on leasing bonuses. We have paid a lot of money at 12.5% royalty and taking full deductions. So yeah, we've done really well. So let's give these guys in Pennsylvania a break. Let's start giving them the best deals out there. Do you think they've started to do that? Do you really at all think that? Well, I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, my opinion, they haven't. And so what, again, we need to recognize this, learn from our own mistakes and learn from the mistakes of others and protect ourselves. And my goal and my job and what I try to do is to make sure that any client, we do reviews, I do reviews and consultations. Do you understand why you're offered that document? You understand the good and bad in the document. That you understand your leverage. You know, why is this being offered to me? How strong is my position? Can I negotiate for more money? Higher royalty percentage for additional language or terms to be added to the agreement? And you certainly very well may be able to do that. But... The company land man who works for the company, who comes out to get you to sign, is not going to do a leverage assessment for you and tell you, hey, look, you really got these guys. Your lease is actually expired, and I'm having you sign this amendment modification ratification because that'll correct this problem. So you really shouldn't do this. You should really go talk to an attorney who knows what they're doing and get help and protect yourself. Um... I don't think you're going to hear that. I don't think you're going to hear that. My opinion again. I'm going to offer more of my opinions as we go forward. But I'm telling you, stick with me. Because I have, I have, I'm going to walk you through what I think is an outstanding example of lease modification and how companies, in my opinion, operate 
and it can be done piecemeal. So they take a little bit today and then they come back and take a little bit more in the future and maybe even again in the future. I'm going to explain that. Stick with me. It's very interesting. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can call me 570-307-0702. Learn about what we do. Learn about what I do. Learn about reviews, consultations, any of these issues. Give me a call. Remember, I have not, I do not, and I will not ever represent gas and pipeline companies. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you tune in each and every week at this time on this station to join me for all things Marcellus and the information you need from the landowner's side. Again, I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. Give us a call. See if we can help you any oil and gas related matter contracts, breach of contracts, pipelines, well sites, releases. We're talking about amendment, modification, ratification, buying and selling property involving gas rights. The Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. And remember, if you call and if we do a review ratification, it's me who does it. We talk. We talk either on the phone or in person. Everyone's welcome to come to the office, but I do these by telephone very often, and they take an hour or two, and they have just proven to be a great resource for people, and do it before you sign. Give us a call. Learn about the service and see if it's right for you, and if it's not right for you, that's okay. Uh, I think it probably will be, but if it's not, that's okay. But give us a call, learn about it, and see if we can help you. I also really encourage people, go to pagasleaseattorney.com. Go to our other website, pipelineattorney.com. By the way, today's show will be up tomorrow, Monday morning, on the website. So you can listen to today's broadcast of All Things Marcellus tomorrow, Monday morning, and if you go to the websites, you'll find there are hours and hours and hours of radio shows available. I've been doing all things Marcellus since 2010. So we're in our eighth year. I'm in my eighth year of doing all things Marcellus, the weekly radio show to get information out to you, the landowner. So it gives you an idea of the experience, the information, Check out the websites, look at the testimonials, and remember, do not worry about distance. I assure you, if I think that distance is an obstacle in representation, I'll be the first one to tell you. But I have clients all across Western Pennsylvania. I've had clients across the country who have oil and gas rights in Pennsylvania. So again, don't be afraid to call, learn what we do. I really want to help you. If I can help you, boy, I want to do it. 570-307-0702 and check out again the websites look at the testimonials from prior clients check them out i think you'll learn a lot about what i do and what we're about and you can again call 570-307-0702 so let me move on i'm going to run you through what i'll call a hypothetical here where this is something that i think um <laughs> actually could very well occur so you have a landowner who has an older gas lease and the company wants to change something in the older gas lease. Now, maybe it's unitization problems they have, maybe it's shut-in problems that they're, they have or they know they will have, but there's some kind of problem. So they say to the landowner, hey, we'd like to amend, modify, and ratify your gas lease. Now they can present this in a lot of different ways, but that's the typical way. But don't get hung up on exactly those buzzwords, but usually you'll see amendment, modification, ratification, and some type of either combination or maybe at least one of those words, but we're looking for that. So let's say that the company says, uh, hey, we wanna amend, modify your gas lease. And then here's something else that I hear sometimes. Oh yeah, and by the way, you know, we, we feel really bad. We only paid you $100 an acre, $200 an acre, but we paid everybody else or a bunch of other people around you thousands of dollars an acre. They also got higher royalties. You got 12.5% royalties. So we want to we wanna kind of make that up to you. 
Now, first off, in my opinion, red flags should be flying all around you at this point, popping up and flying all around you. But again, we listen, we want to hear them out, and then we go and we get our own information so we can make the right decision for ourselves. So they say, yeah, we we, we want to make sure that you know we're kind of treating you right. We're a really good company. We want to make sure we treat people right. So we're going to do this amendment modification of your gas lease. So it has a couple different terms. So one of the things that they're going to change is going to be something that they need to change or otherwise they're not able to develop. So maybe that's some sort of shut-in limitation language. Maybe that is some sort of unitization change. And maybe it's something even more tricky and harder to distinguish when you first look at it. But also, they need to give you a shiny object to distract your attention. Because you may say, hmm, why are they giving me this shut-in language? Why are they giving me this unitization language? Well, the company needs to get you focused away from those issues to stop asking those questions and be distracted by the shiny object. And that shiny object may be, hey, we'll give you extra money for the well pad or whatever we're going to do. We'll give you some money. We'll promise you a bunch of money in the future and explain how you signing this will result in future riches and how it's going to be so spectacular for you in the future. Just sign here. Or they say, hey, in this amendment modification, check this out. We're going to change your royalty language. And I'm telling you this, guys. Again, I'll, look, there's, there's just too many things you have to remember. There's just too many. But remember this. If you are getting, oh, remember this. If you are getting, because it just makes me go out of my mind. If you are getting an amendment and modification of your gas lease and the company is changing your royalty language, I have never seen that occur just out of the company's kindness. If your royalty language is being amended, modified, or changed in any fashion, I will bet you, I'll take every bet I can get on this, that it's not to your advantage. That it's not to your advantage. And maybe, and I can't scream maybe enough, maybe the royalty language might benefit you. And I mean, this is so rare, but maybe it does. And if it does, the benefit is going to be significantly outweighed by the detriment or the negative somewhere else. But I don't want you to lose focus in this. I want you to remember this. If you are given an amendment modification of your gas lease and that new document changes something in your royalty, something even like... Well, you were at 12 and a half. Now we're going to give you 13, 13 and a half. If that's happening, it's because they're changing the royalty calculation method. Or they're not increasing it and they're just changing the royalty calculation method to make it more of a detriment to you, to make it worse for you. They are not in the business of going back and going to contracts that are beneficial to them and coming out to you to change that contract to make it beneficial or more beneficial to you, the landowner. It is not happening. It will not happen. They are coming to you to change the royalty language for a reason. And almost and virtually every time, if not every time, it is because the company is getting a benefit. And sometimes that benefit is enormous. And I see too many times after the fact that people have signed amendments and modifications and changed their royalty language to their detriment and had no idea. And why is that? Because the party they were dealing with, the company, the landman who works for the company, the company employee, the company representative, whoever that individual or individuals are, are working for the company out to get the best deal for the company they can. And that is okay. That's okay. That's the system. 
we need to identify the system and it's not real hard. They're out to do the best they can. You need to do the best you can. And that's what we need to make sure happens. And when they are changing your royalty language, you can darn well be sure they're not changing it because they want to pay you more money. If you think that ever happens, everybody who's listens, you do it, tell your friends, tell everybody you know, tell all your neighbors, hey, listen, let's all call the gas company and see if they'll raise our royalty by one percentage point, by a half of a percentage point. Well, it's laughable. They're, of course, not going to do it. They're never going to do that. So when they come to you and they want to change something in your royalty clause, your royalty language, do you really, really think that there's a chance that they're doing that because they want to make less money and give you more money. I really hope you don't think that way because I'm going to tell you, I don't think that way. And I have a lot of experience in dealing with this. And that is in my mind, a crazy way to think. And we can't think that way. You're listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark law firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. Give us a call reviews, amendments, modifications, anything related to oil and gas, give us a call 570-307-0702. Stop signing, start calling. Get somebody who's going to help you, who's going to give you that information you need and explain. Why are they changing my royalty language? Boy, this seems great. You know, this seems wonderful. And of course, you know, we have all these expressions and one of them is always, well, something seems too good to be true. Well, often it doesn't even seem that good, but if even if it seems good, it's too good to be true. So we need to identify these and what is going on. And one of the cases recently, the company offered to pay a lot more for a well pad on the property than what you would expect them to pay, which raises red flags. And then reviewing it, it appears that maybe this company actually doesn't even have a lease. So we get, we pay the, we pay the landowner. We offer to pay them more money to put a pad on their property and we do an amendment and modification of their ga gas lease and ratification. And in that document, we fix our other problems. So we draw their attention to the fact we're going to pay them more on a per acre basis for the pad site. Maybe we normally pay a thousand or 1500. We're going to pay these guys four or 5,000, something really high. And so they'll focus on that and what a sweet deal they're getting and we'll fix our other problems. And it's a small price to pay for us as a company to do that. Now I've been talking about amendment ratification and modification. And if the company wants to change your royalty language, you better put your pen down and figure out what the heck is going on here because this change is ultimately not going to benefit you. It's just simply not. And you need to figure it out and you need to figure out what should I be doing? Because these mistakes, I hope that everybody understands the sincerity of this. These mistakes can truly cost, and it depends on your acreage. You know, if you have one acre, you have a hundred or you have 200 or you have 50 or anywhere in between, these mistakes can cost you your family, future generations easily into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you have some more acreage, you're in a good gas producing area, it literally, literally can cost you into the millions of dollars. Not every case, but it can, and it can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. But I see people signing documents or I see documents again, after the fact that I know that they've just given up hundreds of thousands of dollars and nobody in their right mind would ever do that unless they relied on the information they were being told. They didn't have the information that they needed and they thought that this was the best decision for them. They didn't say, eh, you know what, <laughs> why take an extra couple hundred grand? What do I need that for the company? They need it. Let me just sign this for a couple hundred thousand dollars. I'll make over time less. Let me just sign this. The company, they, they need it. They got, they're, they're nice guys. Let's, let me give that money to them. No, nobody does that. You make that decision because you're not informed 
And that's what we want to do. We want to inform you. And whether you're getting information from me, and remember, the radio show is general information, not specific advice. The specific advice is always get specific advice. You can call, learn about what we do, see if I can help you, and see if I'm right for you. You know, I think in most cases we are, but check it out. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. And keep tuning in each and every week at this time on this station to join me, Doug Clark, with all things Marcellus. And when I get back, I'm going to go through an amendment that I have here. And again, I'm going to run some hypothetical to this, but I'm going to illustrate something. And I'm a bit biased, but yeah, I think it's pretty interesting. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, I represent landowners and only landowners and oil and gas right owners. I have not, I do not, and I will never represent gas or pipeline companies. And make sure to tune in each week at this time on this station to join me for all things Marcellus. I've been doing this show now. We're in our eighth year. Eight. That's right. Eight. Eighth year of doing all things Marcellus. And check out the websites at pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Boy, if you're presented with a pipeline agreement and you're not going to pipelineattorney.com to get information, learn, get you thinking, I believe you're making a mistake. Whether you call me, whether you're looking for representation or information, check out the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. A lot of great information there. And again, join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. So I wanted to get into it here. All right. So my little scenario we're creating is landowner has a lease in this existing lease has some language in there that the company doesn't like. And it may be very problematic that the language in there, or maybe even the, the lease is actually terminated. And so the company comes to this person and says, I wanna give you an amendment, modification, ratification, or something along those lines of your existing gas lease. So let's pretend that they add some shut-in language. But here's what I wanna focus on. Let's also say that they've offered you language that's, a, that's changing your royalty. And in this case, in my little hypothetical, let's say that the landowner's royalty rate that would be changed by the amendment would be increased from 12.5% to 13.5%. Well, hey, 12.5%, 13.5%, is bigger. I'd rather have that. Well, yes, 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 yes. But we got to dig deeper. We have to dig deeper. The one percentage point could be the shiny object that distracts us. We can't be distracted by the shiny object. We must focus on the substance. What is happening? Why is this changing? Now, number one, one percent of royalty may be a small price to pay for a gas lease to revive it when it's actually terminated. Or it may be a small price to pay for a gas lease that you actually as a company cannot even operate under because you can't shut wells in and you're going to need to. Or maybe the unitization language in the existing gas lease precludes you and prohibits you from conducting your operation. So you need to change it. Maybe those are the real reasons. But also we got to throw in a shiny object here so the landowner isn't focusing on those very powerful reasons that give the landowner potentially quite a bit of leverage, or maybe even there's no existing lease and so they can actually negotiate and maybe the percentage today is 15%, 18%, whatever it may be, but it's higher than 13 and a half percent. So of course, give the landowner one percentage point increase on their royalty and that's what we'll focus on and we will distract them from realizing that what we're taking over here or what we're acquiring over here the right to shut in wells the right to unitize where we wouldn't otherwise have that right or the right to create these super large units when we wouldn't have that right we'll distract from there because that's what we really want and we'll increase the royalty percentage by a point oh and uh and this gets tricky 
the landowner, let's give them some language. This is me talking, okay? Because this is me talking. Hypothetically, maybe they say, and look, let's construct this royalty language in a way, this way we're going to change it. We're going to give them another percentage point and we'll construct it in a way that they're going to believe that they're not going to have deductions taken. Now, again, this is me talking. This is a hypothetical. But let me explain what I mean by that, how something like that maybe could occur. So, okay, landowner gets this amendment modification ratification. Here is the provision that would change the royalty clause. So it says that, and I'm going to paraphrase and not use these less or less ease and all the legal jargon, but I'm going to paraphrase it some. So it says, uh, landowner shall receive 13.5% royalty for sales proceeds actually received by the company from the sale of the gas production. Okay, increase my royalty by one percentage point. Generally speaking, that's certainly a good thing. However, there is more. Royal goes on. Royalties shall be paid based on an arm's length transaction without deduction for the cost of pipeline, transportation, compression, and so on. And it says, or otherwise to make the gas ready for sale or use or otherwise marketable. Let me kind of go back and make that a little easier to understand. First part, increase royalty from 12.5% to 13.5%. Second part, royalties will be based on an arm's length sale to an unaffiliated party. If you listen at all to the show, you'll know I like that. So that sounds good. They're going to give you the price that they sell it at to a non-affiliated party. That's what we want. And then, then it goes on, more stuff that we want, goes on to say, and we're not going to charge you any of these post-production costs, pipeline fees that we have in order to make the gas ready for sale or use, and then it goes on, or otherwise marketable. Now, that's good language. We'll take that language if that's all we can get, but we want better language. Some companies will take deductions with that language. Some companies will not. You need to understand who it is and how they're going to do it. But you also need to understand that even if you sign a lease today with a company who, with what we call the ready for sale or use language, if you sign a lease with them today and they don't take deductions, they may sell your lease. They may be taken over by a company. They may sell a part of your lease to other company or companies. And those companies may treat it differently and take deductions. So ideally, we want to address this now and prevent the potential of future deductions, even if they're not occurring today. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with Attorney Doug Clark. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station and call us at 570-307-0702. See if we can help you. So let me go on. So let me again just kind of reset real quick. This is an amendment modification of your existing gas lease example. The company has came out to, to give you this amendment modification. And in one section, they're getting something for them. In the other section, they're saying, hey, look, we're going to change your royalty. And the landowner has the impression that their royalty is going to be increased from 12.5% to 13.5% which it is, but they also, in this case, believe that there will not be post-production costs that are deducted from their royalty payments, meaning that the company will not subtract pipeline fees, compression fees, things of that nature from the royalty payments. And that, as most people know, can be very significant. So in this case, here is the provision we're going through, I'm paraphrasing it, saying that Number one, the royalty is changing from 12.5% to 13.5%. Number two, that the royalties are going to be paid based on an arm's length transaction, meaning not selling it to themselves or a company they own, selling it to a third party, and that's what we want. We don't want it to sell it to themselves cheap and pay us royalty on the cheap price. We want them to sell it in the open market where they're fighting to get the best price and pay royalty on that price price. 
So we like that 13.5% based on an arm's length tra uh, transaction goes on to state no deductions for pipeline, transportation, gathering, compression in order to make the gas ready for sale or use or otherwise marketable. That language is interpreted differently by different companies and you really, before you sign anything, need to understand that and understand what you have, what your company does and how that may change in the future. But here's the kicker. And doesn't it seem like there's always a kicker? Here's the bottom part of this provision. It goes on to state something com somewhat complicated. It goes on to state that for the purposes of determining the royalty that you're going to be paid as the landowner, for the purposes of, the, of determining the royalty due, gas shall be valued at the weighted average sell price of the gas using sales to the first unaffiliated party, which again, we like that. It goes on though, and this, this, this is the kicker. Less the cost to transport pipeline quality gas to the point of sale. Again, less the cost. They're going to, well, let me back up. They're going to pay you the royalty based upon the sale price to an unaffiliated party. And then they're going to subtract and deduct the costs for transporting pipeline quality gas to the sales point. Ladies and gentlemen, pipeline quality gas. Do you know what it means? Do you know how that is going to be interpreted? Does the landman tell you this? Does the company representative tell you this? What is pipeline quality gas? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Doug Clark will tell you this, but unfortunately we're up against the break. So I'll tell you after this break how this is a bit tricky. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give us a call. See if we can help you. Anything oil and gas related, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. And I'm going to explain the loophole and pipeline quality gas when I get back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. And give us a call, 570-307-0702. See if we can help you learn about reviews and consultations, anything oil and gas related. Call before you sign at least call, learn about reviews and consultations and see if we can help you. Regardless of your location, as long as that property or those gas rights are in Pennsylvania. Also make sure you're visiting the websites at pagasleaseattorney.com and pipelineattorney.com. Pipeline attorney, pipeline, pipeline, pipeline. Check it out. Okay, I want to get back into this. So here we go, real quick resetting. Landowner is given a, a, an amendment modification and ratification of the existing gas lease. As part of this, the company is getting something that they want and it may be any number of things, but we're talking about possibly correcting a shut-in problem, correcting a unitization problem, or possibly, possibly reviving a lease that's actually terminated. And I've seen that occur on multiple occasions. So we need to identify these and why it's occurring. Now we talk about the shiny object in this case, it is the increase of royalty percent from 12 and a half to 13 and a half percent. But we know we need to look deeper and look at the language because the landowner believes they have a lease amendment of their royalty provision, which now is going to result in no deductions for pipeline fees, transportation costs, compression and things of that nature. And unfortunately, in this case, the landowner doesn't have the information that they need and they're under, I'll call it a false impression. What do I mean? So again, briefly, royalty raises from 12 and a half to 13 and a half percent. Next, it says in this new language that, hey, we're not going to deduct transportation, gathering, pipeline fees in order to make the gas ready for sale or use. And, and I like this, 
we're going to value your royalty at the point when we sell the gas to a third party. But again, back to our kicker, as there often is the kicker. And it's a kick in the butt in this case. So the last part of this provision states that for the purposes of determining the royalty due to you, the landowner, the gas shall be valued at the weighted average sales price. That's a show for another day, but we need to know what that is. But for now, they're going to pay you the weighted average sales price of the gas when they sell it to an unaffiliated party. But here is the clause buried at the end of this lengthy provision states that less meaning minus. So it's less the cost to transport pipeline quality gas to the point of sale to such unaffiliated party. So what does that mean? Well, a couple things. You could have a very common sense definition of what is pipeline quality gas. Well, if the gas is produced at the well site and is placed into a pipeline and transported, would that be or would it not be pipeline quality gas? It's gas in the pipeline. Would that be pipeline quality gas? Well, the good news is, is the mere fact that the gas is in a pipeline somewhere probably doesn't mean, probably doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to be pipeline quality gas. But there's certainly an argument that if gas is in a pipe, any pipeline, that it's pipeline quality gas. It's in a pipeline. However, that's probably not the argument. The argument is probably more defined than that. And the argument is most likely that when natural gas enters into an interstate pipeline, which is not the pipelines from the well site that move the gas from the well site, or even these gas system that collects the gas from the various well sites, that gas goes through pipelines, these smaller ones from the various wells, kind of like a spider web. And that gas is ultimately transported through this pipeline system to the interstate pipeline. The big 30 inch, 36 inch, 42, we're talking Transco, Tennessee, Millennium, these big pipelines. So the gas comes from the wells and through this pipeline system locally, it's transported through pipelines to it hits the interstate pipeline. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So the gas gets to the interstate pipeline. Interstate pipelines are regulated by the federal government, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission called FERC, F-E-R-C. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission regulates the interstate pipelines. Gas going into the interstate pipeline has to meet certain quality specifications to get into the interstate pipeline. It can't have con too many contaminants. It can't have too much water in it. It needs to be of a certain quality to go into the interstate pipeline. Well, think about it. Quality interstate pipeline. So when we look at language that says that they'll pay your royalties at the sale point less or minus the costs to transport pipeline quality gas to that point of sale, well, virtually for certain, they're saying that once this gas is of sufficient quality to go into the interstate pipeline where the federal government regulates the quality of the gas that's allowed into the system. Once your gas meets those specifications and we as a company are transporting gas that could go into the interstate pipeline, we can now deduct those charges. So here's what you're going to run into. Most companies will say the gas in most, most, especially northern, northeastern Pennsylvania, is dry enough, doesn't have liquids, doesn't have contaminants. It's dry enough 
that it immediately, when it comes out of the well, at the well site, the methane content and the quality of the gas could literally go right into the interstate pipeline. There is no interstate pipeline at the well site, though. But the company has pipeline quality gas. It's chemically pipeline quality. It's at the well site. And once they move that gas from the well site through the pipeline system to get to the interstate pipeline, what type of gas are they moving? They are moving pipeline quality gas. So when they say that they can deduct, subtract, minus, whatever, less, the cost of the transport pipeline quality gas to the point of sale. What that then means is they sell the gas to a third party and then they subtract the costs for all the pipeline fees that it took them or they paid from the well site to the point of sale. So they are now taking deductions. So all that other language <laughs> makes it seem like, hey, this is really good. But at the end of the day, they're going to take deductions. They're going to sell it and they're going to subtract all of their costs and expenses to get it to that sell point because they're going to say that gas was of pipeline quality at the well site. And so then when we moved it through the pipeline system, we were transporting pipeline quality gas and therefore we take the sell price, we deduct our transportation cost, and you get, ladies and gentlemen, the wellhead price, despite what you may have thought. And that, my friends, happens all the time. And you need to understand it. So if the company landman or company tells you, oh, yeah, we're giving you royalty without deduction, and you then get advice and you have this interpreted by someone who knows what they're doing and then explains to you, well, here's what this really means. Then you can go back to the company and say, look, I'm getting royalty without deduction, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah, that's the plan. That's what we're doing. That's what we want to do. We're such great guys. Well, good then. Let's change this language so it does what you're telling me it does. We want this language to match what you're verbally telling me because we know that a year from now, when we start getting royalties and there's deduction and we go back and we say, hey, 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 the land man told us that. No one's going to listen. No one is going to listen. You need to get this corrected before you sign, not afterwards. And, you know, I said there's always a kicker. Here you go. Here's one more kicker for you. So stay with me on this and I'm short on time. But this, this amendment says that they're going to pay you based upon the price that they achieve when they sell this gas to a third party that's not related to them. That's really good for us. But let me forecast the future. You have this type of language that requires your royalties based on a sale to a third party. The company's going to come back and they're going to try to amend and change this again. And hopefully you're smart enough that you remember, hey, amendment ratification, I'm not going to fall for this. But the reason why they're going to change it is you take your shells of the world and many other companies, Sweppy, many other companies will sell the gas to themselves at the wellhead. So this language would help you there. So what are they going to do? They're not going to like it. And they're going to come back and they're going to try to modify and change this language. You need to be aware of all these things. And boy, I hope it's coming across. You need to protect yourself. You need to get good quality advice before you sign. So I'm up against it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. See if we can help you. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. And remember, stop signing bad agreements. The land man works for the company, not you, the land owner. Have a great week, everyone. See you next week.